uh, Ruth. Uh, of course, our topic for today is talking about uh, the, the call for uh, the freedom of speech uh, in global uh, information war. Uh, we noted that in, in sometime in September, uh, you organization organized a conference to throw more light, to educate the masses on this uh, uh, Ukraine hit list. And, and the latest development shows that the president of Uganda, Yoram Savani, has been added to this list. So can we in a, uh, have a holistic uh, approach of what this hit list is all about and how they uh, operate? Certainly, thank you. So the issue of the Ukraine crisis affects the entire world for several reasons. One is that countries are being asked or told that they have to join a bloc, that they have to choose their alliance. Are they with NATO? Are they with Russia? And this can have grave consequences, including economic sanctions, political implications. Countries should not have to make this choice. The other global impact of the Ukraine crisis is an economic one, where there are significant disruptions in the provision of energy, of fertilizer, of agricultural inputs. This is worsening food insecurity that is already a very devastating crisis on the planet and making it worse. So the danger of this hit list is that people like myself, like Jeff Harley, who are part of independent institutes who are speaking out for negotiations, for peace, for an end to the huge flow of weapons that will only extend the war, instead of being treated as individual citizens who care about our future, the Ukrainian government says that we are tools of Vladimir Putin, that we are mouthpieces for the Kremlin. And then they create hit lists on which many people have already been killed, and they write over the pictures of those who have been assassinated, liquidated. I don't want to be liquidated. And they also use this to help have censorship on the social media, where if you say things that are not approved of, then you know the, the NATO trolls bombard your account with reports, they try to get you banned from Twitter, banned from Facebook. And this is an extreme danger to free speech. We should be able to talk and say what we think. Isn't this the democracy that NATO is supposedly defending in Ukraine? Where is democracy if your political opinion put you on a hit list? This is not democracy. Security are there, and it's actually bringing me to what I wanted us to talk about. Is it that uh, in wanting to define the new world order, uh, superpowers have missed the course, and and the, 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 the whole world, the global world, now face the, the consequences? Uh, we 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 talk about the demise of a Russian journalist who who died, uh, and of course. Apparently, she was on uh, the, the hit list. So is this the new world order that is taking another dimension? Yes, I think that is an example of the way that they want to force this new order. So the, across the, the so-called West, Europe, the United States, so forth, the economy is in terrible condition. Financially, very, uh, very bad direction. The inflation rate is going up. They're creating more money. The price of energy in Europe, for example, where energy was relatively inexpensive for the a world level, now it's going up two times, three times, five times, ten times. They've lost their energy supply from Russia. People are being told that they have to uh, reduce the number of washing, how much washing they do. They have to change the temperature of their homes. They should stop using their automobiles because this is how you stop Vladimir Putin. So what they're saying is that economic depression, that an increase in poverty, lowered living standards, they say this is good. This is the new world order that they offer. They also do this through the green policy. They say, oh, the planet is in danger, so to have a good future, we must be poor today. And they say that countries that are developing 
must slow down their rate of development, must reduce their carbon dioxide emissions, even where there are people in poverty. That is the order of the United Kingdom and the United States, the city of London and Wall Street. That is what they offer to the world. But if you look at the new institutions that are coming into being, for example, the alliance known as the BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. This is very important to bring the major nations, specifically India, Brazil, South Africa. They are not members of the Security Council, but they represent extreme importance on the planet. More countries want to join the BRICS. The Shanghai Cooperation Organization, more countries want to join this. We have the New Development Bank, the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, the potentials with the African Development Bank. So the world really has a choice of development and growth in cooperation. Maybe China's Belt and Road Initiative can be an important part of this, or the old colonial system that is offered by London, which is no development, enforced poverty, and war if necessary, to maintain that. And that's what we're seeing today. You know, Russia is a sovereign country. It makes its own decisions. That's not okay to London. That sovereignty is a threat to their desire for a world colonial empire as they have had for centuries. So today it is Russia and China. In the future, what will this mean for other countries? What will this mean for South Africa? What will this mean for Cameroon? What will this mean for Pakistan? Countries are being told to make a choice and it should not be a necessary choice. Countries should be free to choose their own development strategies, to choose their own colleagues, their own collaborators. They should not have to choose between the West and Russia and China, for example. So it, this is why it, it, it's so important to break through and have a full discussion of the causes of the Ukraine crisis. The crisis did not begin in February with President Putin's decision to begin his military operation. This crisis goes back to 2014, to the unconstitutional change of government in Ukraine. And it goes back further than that to the effects of the Cold War and the expansion of NATO and treating Russia today as a threat when it is not the Soviet Union of 30 years ago. This old outlook of enemies, it's really an old outlook and it should be replaced by a collaborative one.